What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Friday, November 5th, 2021, and the market is closed. Jumping right into it, we're going to be taking a look at this specific trade on the SPX that I took today. We're going to be analyzing the SPY, the ES futures, as well as the SPX. There's a lot of data points and a lot of things that you can put together when you're looking for a short, especially when the market is so strong. We're experiencing probably one of the strongest bull markets in history, but yet there's still a lot of good short opportunities out there if you just know what to look for and if you know how to be patient. I like to look for shorts in certain situations like this because believe it or not, even though everything is rallying, I feel a little bit uncomfortable buying the highs. If we just jump into the daily time frame, you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. This is the SPY. Things look very overextended. However, you cannot come in and just keep trying to pick a top. I've done a couple videos before on what's called shorting backside weakness. It means I'm not trying to top tick the market. I'm just coming in patiently and then executing when everything aligns. So as we're on a daily time frame, let's take a look at something real quick. Let's just start off by how most traders might take a look at a chart and try to draw out some sort of trend lines or a channel. And one of the problems with this method right away is that it's very discretionary. So if we go here, we can say one can make the argument that this is what the channel would be and we've actually broken out of the channel. We can remove that here. Let's actually zoom in and try to use more present day price action and maybe go with something like this and bring this down here and we can say maybe this is the channel and then you guys can see that it actually shows that this was the resistance for the channel there's a lot of different ways to draw this so this is why i don't rely on this as one of my data points for whenever i'm looking for a trade entry however i am aware that we are in some sort of a channel and we are pressing up at the upper end of it before the market actually even opened if we jump over to my discord real quick just want to show you guys in the uh, futures tab right here i posted this uh, earlier in the day i actually opened up a short trade on the micro futures right now because i want to scale into it don't want to be in anything too large because once again i'm not looking to get steamrolled over i'm now coming in because the risk reward is so good and there's a lot of signs that we should be looking to either start taking risk off which means don't put so much capital into your long trades you want to if you're balancing some sort of a portfolio, you want to start making sure you have some sort of short trades in there just in case the market does pull back. You want to make sure you have spy puts to protect any type of long positions in which you're currently swinging. If we scroll right here, I did mention that this is what the uh, channel might be looking like on the MES, so we still have a little bit more room to go. Now, this short trade actually ended up working out pretty nicely today, but again, I'm looking for a much bigger profit target on this, so let's just ignore this for now. But I just wanted to show you guys, I was thinking about the channel a little bit earlier in the day, and... And as we jump back to this here, I want to show you guys another method that uh, a good friend of mine, excellent trader, Tommy the Bull, actually showed me this. He's something he calls the shadow box method. I had this drawn up a little bit earlier as I was looking for, is there any type of signs that were coming onto the top? So I went back to right here and I looked at, this was the last time the market seems pretty overextended. So you pretty much draw a box over the area from the low to the high, and then you can duplicate it to get some sort of a gauge for how long would it be before the market hits some sort of a top again so i drew that out and i was like this showed here and this is actually where i thought the market was going to stop before because this was the previous all-time high however we blew right past it so then i was like is there another type of shadow, bo shadow boxing which i was missing to show that maybe the market is extended so what was the last time the market did some sort of extended move like this let's just zoom out and take a look at this time period right here so if we draw the shadow box from here to here let's duplicate that one now and then see what do we get so from right there to here so i was like uh-huh okay so this is just one way of what's called the measured move it means this move right here took this much amount of time the last time so in a sense if the market was to duplicate that move it should be around here is where we should hit the top however we ended up reaching the upper end of this measured move the last time almost twice as fast i would say about 60 percent the the distance from here to here or about 55 60 percent or so so this is a very fast move whereas the last time it consolidated a little bit before it went a little bit higher before ultimately pulling back so as i was looking at this measured move i was like i saw that and i was like okay great so that's one reason to be looking for some sort of a short in addition to the overextension in addition to the fact that we are pressing up on the upper end of a channel depending on how you draw it multiple traders out there technical analysis traders out there are drawing all sorts of channels so there's going to be a lot of convergence or conflict influence up there but more importantly for me i use quant trading app which is a platform in which i'm the lead developer for and it's actually an algorithm that i use to help gauge whenever we're reaching some sort of peaks and things like that so this right here are the algorithmic levels from quant trading app link is in the description down below if you're interested but this right here is what's known as a two sigma level so if we just go over to the quant trading app website 
and we look at the table for the SPY, let me just toggle the data back to here. This is showing all of the uh, support and resistance levels that the ALGO would have generated for the year so far and how many times it's touched it. The two sigma resistance, as it says right here, is something that's very rare. The market has only touched it 77% of the time for this year. And if we actually just jump back to 2020, just to see, to uh, give you guys a point of reference. So 11% of the time last year did it touch the two sigma resistance. So in other words, it's something that's very rare. For those of us that use Quant Trading App, at this point, you guys have heard me say it a million times, we already know it's very difficult for the market to close above or below two sigmas, especially on Fridays. So we usually want to look for some sort of a trade that's going to be some sort of a reversion to the mean. In other words, just got to bring price back down to reality because it's pretty overextended. And this is where our two sigma was for this week. So I came in today looking for a short from pre-market. And the next question is just, well, when do we take the short? I've also done a couple of videos on the channel about shorting this backside weakness right here. So I actually entered my short trade right as we broke back down below VWAP. Now, what makes this particular trade special is that not only do we have two sigma, we also have convergence from the larger time frame as I showed you guys we had the uh, the shadow box we had a trend line but what really brought my attention to be honest with you guys was just the fact that there was two sigma i was aware of the other things but i kind of throw a lot of technical analysis out the way as i'm slowly becoming more and more of a quantitative type of trader which means i'm only looking for trades around the levels that the algo generates when VWAP aligns with two sigma like this, it, it it ends up being a very powerful level if price gets below it. So what we have is this sort of a rising wedge type of pattern or better yet, a symmetrical triangle. My previous videos were actually on the rising wedge. Let's actually just turn off these studies and just look at the pure price action of it all. And we have this pattern right here. So most technical analysis traders might identify this triangle and they'll want to short the breakdown of the triangle, which is pretty valid. But how you can add a little bit more confluence or confidence, if you will, to your trade, because the more confluence you have, if you're anything like me, the more confluence I can find, the more confidence I'm actually in the trade. And confluence just means a lot of things aligning with each other. So if you guys aren't using some sort of algo that can tell you exactly where two sigma levels are, let me show you guys another way you can even digest this. And if we go to the ES, at this point, I'm under the assumption you've seen a lot of the volume profile based contents on my channel. So this is when I come to the futures to actually take a look at this. I'm going to draw this right here, which would have been the points of control for the day so even though this is the point of control for the entire day you can just take my word for it that this was also the point of control at the this time so prior to this price action here if we disregard this if we go back in time this is what our point of control would have been and that's just saying this is where the majority of shares was traded was in this level up here and specifically at this price so with that point of control let's jump back to the smaller time frame and we can see this right here. So now we're looking at the ES. So we're looking at the futures. We've taken a look at the SPY. And next, we're going to take a look at the SPX. Here is the same triangle forming. But now we have this point of control. Once price breaks down below this, this is saying that anybody that's been long up here, they don't have a good value for the price in which they paid for. So they're essentially going to be looking to close the trade. In other words, stopping out. And if we have a bunch of people that are buyers up here, they're pretty much trapped up here with a bad price. They're going to look to start selling. Now, today was not not necessarily the type of environment where bulls are panicking to get out of their position because bulls are still very confident right now in the market. So we didn't necessarily get this sharp drop, but I like when there's a nice slow consolidation like this. It actually gives you plenty of time to get in the trade. There's multiple ways in which you can structure this trade. You can just buy puts. You can short the futures. You can enter some sort of put calendar spread. You can enter some sort of credit spread like a bear call spread. In other words, you can short the call for here, buy this call for here, and let the time decay eat away at the options up here. There's multiple ways to trade this, but it's just about identifying the setup. So if this is what's called front side strength, this is what's called backside weakness. And I've talked about this. You don't want to short when the market is going up like this. You're just going to drive yourself crazy. You're going to end up taking a bunch of nicks. You're going to end up being pretty frustrated and then psychologically not okay versus just letting a lot of this consolidation happen and build up. Let there be a key level. If you're using the volume profile, you have a point of control, which is super powerful. For me, what brought my attention first and foremost was knowing we were at two sigma or coming up to two sigma from pre-market on the spy so that's what allowed me to further investigate i went and looked at the data i went and looked on larger time frames i wanted to see if there was an extra reason to take the short trade and this was all why all of this was happening so then it just became the question of exactly where do i enter and to make it simple, just enter once we break down below the point of control and set your stop loss 
over the point of control or over whatever key price levels you see. So in other words, if there's a wick up here, you can set your stop loss over this right here. In my case, because I actually traded the SPX, we'll jump to that next. I wanna actually show you guys what the quant trading app algo levels look like on the SPX. I go to style, let's show studies, and here we go. So here is our two sigma level. All I had to do was just wait for price to get below it. Once it cracked below this level here, I was interested and I entered the short. My target whenever I'm shorting anything is always going to be low a day. And I liked the fact that low of day was coinciding with a nice even whole number of 4,700. Heading over to the Discord, let me just actually go to the gold chat and let's actually see right here. So yeah, 11.29, I just said I'm short the uh, SPX with a stop over two sigma. Everyone in the chat knows what this means. So 11.30 being right in this vicinity right here. If we jump over to the SPY, let's take a look at what price action actually looks like over there we come right over you can get vwap on the spx so i use the spy whenever i'm looking to take trades on the futures as well as the spx but you can see this was the breakdown below vwap right here and around 11:30, which would have been right here is where i actually got short stop right over the two sigma level and obviously you want to give it a little bit of room so if this is the candlestick i'm looking for and this is the candlestick i'm looking for my stop loss might be right over here now i generally don't set a hard stop loss on a trade like this i'll just set alerts at this level over here and then come back to look at it my hard stop would be somewhere over here because i want to give the trade a little bit of room in this case it was pretty painless and we ended up getting pretty much the full gap fill on the move i was out the trade right here i believe so let's just see when did I mention it? I said, um, uh, I'm flat. So at 113, so 113 was right around here. Yeah, exactly right here. Once I saw this, once I saw these, this tweezer pattern or whatever forming right here, I didn't really want to be involved if the trade came back up to uh, VWAP because I was in zero day options. And speaking of options, let's take a look at what those looked like as we jump to the SPY on the left hand side right here. These are the SPY 470 puts on the right hand side. So at the time in which we were looking to enter the trade, as I move my cursor around, you guys can see the uh, cursor is mirrored on both sides. So right here, we're talking about entering the short trade. These contract was going for about 65 cents. And at the time in which I would have exited the trade, which have been right around here, they were going for two bucks. So, so from here to here, you're talking about over 200%, but the full meat of the move was about almost 400%, 360%, I would say would be a realistic target. Now, when I entered the trade, I did mention that you can hold for, this is the two day anchored view app right here. You can use this as your profit target, but I'm usually a little bit conservative again, especially since I was trading zero day options. I didn't want to take the risk of holding for too long, especially after it had put in this huge extension right here. I figured this was more than enough and the uh, the SPX contract in which I actually traded was this one right here so I got in for about a dollar and I ended up turning it into a spread which is what I'm going to show you guys for a second so I sometimes I start off as a trade as a naked option and then I turn it into a spread so I closed this one out because because I'm generally looking to have theta work in my favor and if you've ever tried to zero day options you know theta is constantly working against you if price is not going in your favor pretty quickly so even though I was pretty confident in the trade it's been a very exhausting trading couple weeks I mean it's been a great couple of weeks but because it's been pretty exhausting i didn't want to have to baby this position as well as micromanage it and knowing that theta would be working against me i decided to turn it into a calendar spread so let's take a look at the calendar spread in which i opened up it was the 4700 put so if we put the spx on this chart here uh, I've done a video also on trading the calendar spreads on zero day options, and I think it's amazing. I'm actually going to start doing a little bit more of them on the SPX since this is, since there's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday expiration. But 4,700, as we mentioned, was sort of the target because that was lower day and it was a nice even number, right? So if we take a look at this, at this time, these, this contract was going for $2. And this is the contract that expired today. It was the weekly contract, it expires today. In other words, when you take a look at this and you see this is going for $2, the assumption is going to be that this is $2 of extrinsic value. Because at the time when the SPX was over here, the only reason this contract was worth anything is because they still had a little bit of time left on it. However, since it only has a few hours to actually make the move, time is going to start eating away at this option pretty quickly. The only thing that's going to make this option increase in value is going to be the implied volatility. And what's going to cause that to happen is because by buying this put you're you're opening a position that has a negative delta so in other words we want the price to go down and therefore our profit will be going up but because but because i wanted theta on my side i decided to short this option to collect this two dollars in premium and then i actually purchased the four thousand seven hundred dollar option going for monday expiration which would be november 8th so if we take a look at this right here 
this option would have cost me eight dollars to buy and the option i shorted i collected two dollars in premium so therefore the cost of this spread was roughly six dollars we're estimating it i believe i paid actually uh, six dollars and fifteen cents at the time but it cost me six dollars and by market close this trade was going for about thirteen dollars or so and that's just because by the time the market closed, this contract was going for $2.58. So therefore, I only ended up losing about $0.58 cents on this option because, again, remember, I ended up, I shorted it. So I collected $2 in premium, but the price was going a little bit higher by the close. So I lost $0.58 cents on this. But the one I was long on for Monday actually ended up closing at $14.50. So this contract went up by a uh, six dollars and sixty cents so minus the 50 cents we're talking about six bucks is how much this option increased in value sorry i mean how much the spread actually increased in value collectively so holding a spread like this until the end of the day is a, is a pretty lucrative plan especially if you have some sort of a general idea for where price is going to close if we take a look at option strat right here which is one of my favorite platforms for analyzing options what we're looking at is the four thousand seven hundred uh calendar for monday and for wednesday of next week and you guys can see so at 11 uh 30 in which the time the spread would have been open we're talking about seven dollars and sixty cents and then my market close is going for nine dollars and 26 cents so this is this is one way to structure it and if we want to take a look at how the pnl for this graph works this is what it looks like i'll leave a link in the description down below for a couple other videos in which i've talked more about the calendar spreads but i like to open these because because if we look at the Greeks, we'll actually see that the theta is positive, And that's what I really like about it. Now, at the time, the Greeks wouldn't have looked like this because, again, the SPX was trading more around this level at this time. It was trading at 4,715. So we're talking about this is after the market is closed. Now, I want to point something out to you guys. If we take a look at the same calendar spread and we go a little bit further out, because some of you guys have been watching my videos, I know it's starting to use calendar spreads. just want to show you guys, if we go a little further out right here, and this is 14 days till expiration, and we take a look at, at the time, if you open this and we go to just today uh, at 11 30 this spread would have been going for a little bit under nine bucks so we'll say nine dollars and eighty cents right and by market close it was only going for ten dollars and 25 cents now while this trade has a lot of room for profit because you can see it's pretty wide it's a little bit safer it is going to cost you a little bit more that to me is not that appealing because you're, you're talking about making less than a dollar on the option so if i'm fairly confident and i'm day trading or i'm taking a short-term swing which means i'm only swinging it for the next day i'll just bring the strike prices closer so i'll short the uh most recent contract so this is what the front month is this is the contract in which i'm shorting which is the one uh, actually on the bottom right here so this negative is saying this is the strike price i'm shorting and then i'm going to purchase the strike price that's right after so in other words if we were to run this right now we're saying we're going to be shorting the Monday expiration and then we're buying the Wednesday expiration and if we take a look at the time what this contract would have been going for in comparison at a uh, in, compar in comparison at uh, 1130 which would have been right here we're talking about paying about 750 and you see this closed at 925 now again I said the contract I entered the spread in which I entered was going for 615 but that's because I did the zero day and we can't pull up the zero day anymore because the market is closed and option strat actually deletes the information or doesn't present the information in this way but now we're talking about almost two bucks in premium made so two hundred dollars made on a trade like this that you can see the PL graph is pretty smooth the only pain in which you would have felt would have been around 130 when it pulled back and that's just because the market ended up this is the strike price right if this is the strike price right here 4700 the market ended up dipping really low below it but then ultimately came right back which is more than likely what happens in situations like this so i would cut it once you hit your strike price and if you're going to hold it past your strike price you have to say you know you'll cut it maybe if it gets outside of your range you can always you'll always know what your range is so in other words if the price got below your break even here you could have cut it here for a break even or continue to hold until the market closed because your room for profitability is pretty wide you pretty much in a spread like this as long as the market close anywhere between here we'll say or i believe yeah all the way down to here so anywhere between here for the quant trading app members you guys already know what these levels are and if if the market is above it we're more than likely going to try and push up towards two sigma or more than likely going to close right at this level or between two sigma so anywhere in this range which is why i anywhere in this range which is why i like the uh, zero day calendar spreads especially on the spx because it's pretty reliable doing something doing stuff like this i've done them on tesla i've done them on the video i've done them other stocks but the other tickers can do whatever they want more so than the spy will do whatever it wants
In other words, it'll be very rare. I don't think statistically the SPY has ever touched a two sigma on a Friday and then closed like all the way back down here unless there was something insanely fundamentally wrong. Once we're up two sigma, the, the, the lowest we're probably going to get back down to is here. And then the same thing if we're hovering around here and then the, the highest we make it is here. It's just the way the market is in a sense programmed to work. On a closing note, I just want to tell you guys why that happens is just because shorter term options are more sensitive to gamma and therefore them being more sensitive to gamma means they're more sensitive to your to the delta. So if we say, let's just say we wanted to run a calendar next week for this strike price right here, we can see the delta on this is negative 12, right? If we then use the calendar that's a little bit further out, you see it only has a delta of negative two. So yes, you're taking on a short trade because you want the market to pull back. This calendar is not going to be that sensitive to short-term price action just because you're going further out. So it's a little bit safer. Obviously, it's going to cost a little bit more. But when you think about it from a potential basis, you could end up sometimes making the same amount of money going a little bit further out. It's only when I'm really confident or I know I'm going to be in a shorter term trade. I'll go with something like this. As you can see, it's much cheaper. And this is another good situation because getting a spread like this now, if we go to the daily time frame, at the same time at, uh, 11, at uh, 1130 today, this spread was going for three dollars and fifty cents, and now you can see this one is up for six fifty because this isn't way out the money. This is a deep out the money uh, put calendar spread, and if you can really get good at technical analysis and timing when things are going to reverse and stuff like that, these are some great calendars to run because for three dollars and something, this would have been a great one to open. Actually, I'm I'm in one right now, the one in which I'm swinging. I posted in the uh, Discord here. I said um, this was before the market even opened. I already said this was 919. I had already considered getting this one for further out to swing, but then I just let everyone know the calendar that I actually ended up opening up was the um, was the 4,650 right here. So I'm in the 4,650, but I went with next week because I'm just expecting some sort of a shorter term pullback. And at the time in which I got filled, uh, 4,600 and Oh yes, this one right here. I actually forgot this is the one in which I'm in. So let's see, I got filled, I believe it was somewhere around here because after I took profit on the other calendar, I just rolled it right into this one and because I, I actually had wished I had just gotten this one at first. After seeing how cheap it was going for and how much this one was actually up, I wish I was in a couple of these and then this is the ones I'm gonna swing. So if you're trying to build up a small margin account, you can trade like this on Robinhood. You only need an account side of like two grand, three grand, and I think that's more than enough. And if 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 you if you're on Robinhood, you actually won't even be trading the SPX, you'll be trading the spy. And these are these are super cheap on the spy. If we jump over to the SPY real quick and you see, let's just say it's the same levels on the SPY. So if you think the SPY is going to pull back, if you think the SPX is going to pull back to 4,650, it's the same thing as the SPY pulling back to 465. And now we're talking about a spread going for 74 cents. And today earlier, the same time in which I entered my trade around 11 and change, the spread was going for 41 cents and now it's going for 73. And it's nice and painless PL. As long as the market just kind of stays a little sideways and then slowly pulls back, the spread is going to end up making money. And then on top of that, these spreads are very sensitive to the VIX. As the VIX is going to rise, the profit is actually going to increase. So wrapping up right now, the things you want to look out for, again, have some sort of clear level, either a two sigma level or you can use a point of control. If you have a point of control from the volume profile and you see VWAP is lining up with it, if price gets below that, you can take that short and it works the same way for long trades also. That was, I'll save that for another video. And then for those of you guys that like to use EMAs and, and things like that, here's a perfect example. I used to trade a lot more off of the three minute time frame. I rarely trade this way anymore. So I'm just letting you guys know, but I will glance over sometimes because I was in this trade for over an hour. So if I'm feeling bored or I'm just like looking around, I'll be like, oh, let me just see what it looks like on another time frame. So this is what you guys know as the nine EMA VWAP crossover. So here goes the cross happened the same time price started breaking down below two sigma or the point of control. And then you're talking about there's your entry to get short, your stop right over this level. And then your target is always going to be low of day or some sort of a gap fill. Last week was my birthday, so that's why there was no new videos last week. I'm now getting back into the groove of things and expect to see a lot of calendar spreads. A lot of the videos, even if it's not about options or spreads, I'm always going to show you guys how you can use the calendar spreads as I'm trying to make them a little bit more popular as I think they're very useful for newer traders. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe, like the video, leave a comment down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.